breakfast of a cheese pita and a pan of chocolat. After a couple of nights at Ballydehob, I drove about five kilometres down the road and found this little harbour called Shull. Loads and loads of boats out in the harbour, massive bay, and this proved to be a great little park up for a few days. After a little walk exploring the area, decided to sit down and chill out. I enjoyed the great views and the lovely fresh air. One of the things I plan to do this time round is to take more time to enjoy the place and less time just ticking places off a list as I drive through. At some point soon, I will do a tour of my car camper, my SUV camper, it's a Honda CRV. I started to film and then realized there's far too much wind noise to even bother. One of the ways I cook is just in the rear of the car like this. I attempted Linda McCartney mozzarella burgers. What a mess of the pan they made. Lovely though. I parked up on the entrance to Skull, or Skull, however it's pronounced. This lovely little place where you can put a boat into the water. And it's difficult, within a few minutes, absolutely chucked it down. And just a few minutes later, I went for a walk. This was some way away, but a modern cemetery and the ruins of an old church overlooking Roaring Water Bay. I'm going to say school, and it has a lovely harbour, really active, lots of people around each and every evening. When you're car camping, good toilet block is essential. Down in the harbour, they even have showers, two in the men's, two in the women, and one in the disabled. That's pretty decent. They're two euros to use, which is okay, and the water lasted much longer. No idea how long it lasted, but I was able to shower. And notice this ferry, a Cape Clear ferry, that come in today and had berthed. There was no one around, no ticket office, no anything. So I went on the web, found out that the first sailing from school to Cape Clear Island of the summer starts tomorrow. I took a break from watching the cricket, the first test, and booked myself on the ferry to Cape Clear Island and to Fastnet Rock. This plucky chap didn't really care about me. It's only usually robins that come this close. Okay, he wasn't on my shoulder or on my hand, but he was only a couple of feet away, which is pretty remarkable. I'm not sure if it's a crow or rook or raven or what, but there's a lot more of these at the seaside in Ireland than in the UK. Very being fueled for its trip over to Cape Clear Island in a little while. So I'm down at Shell and I'm going over to Cape Clear on a boat trip today and then for a, a tour around, and I mean around, not on Fastnet Rock, Fastnet Lighthouse. So it should be a fun day. I managed to get a really good parking space, but when it comes to leaving two days later, I got really nervous reversing, getting it into gear and reversing out of that space because all I could see from the windscreen was the into the harbour water. Some amazing properties in amazing locations on these headlands in Ireland. Look at the amount of acreage that's around that house, the trees, beautiful. I think that navigation beacon's on Long Island and there right over in the distance is the Fastnet Lighthouse. Can't wait to go there later this afternoon. He's enjoying the sea life there. There's the western end of Cape Clear Island. We shall be docking soon in North Harbour and I shall be going to walk out towards the east direction. Cape Clear ferries run seasonal ferries from school and from Baltimore, but they also run year round from Baltimore, serving the locals who live on the island. This is clearly the Baltimore Ferry it might stop at Shirkin Islands as well on the way back, I'm not 100% sure. But that is another option from Baltimore. You can go to Shirkin Island. Ferry I'm on is a much more modern version of the one you can see out there. First impressions, it looks pretty amazing. 
We'll have about two and a half hours on the island before we go off on the Fastnet tour. So I'm going to go for a hike for an hour and a half and then find somewhere to have a nice drink. So nice coming into dock. The skipper really had control of this smallish ferry. I shall be going on a lot smaller than this in the next week or two. But it's not a big ferry like you'd get used to crossing the channel. This ferry holds a couple hundred people, I would imagine. It's got lifeboats for up to 300. Cross channel ferries up to 2,000. Next week, the ferry I'll be getting out to an island will have seats for 12 passengers. So I left the harbour area quickly, noticing lots and lots of cars that would never be legal on the road on the mainland. I'm not sure on the legalities on little islands like this. What a stunning place to live. at least in the spring and summer, that's for sure. Look at this. Absolutely stunning. Oh, the camera hides some stuff. I am absolutely naked. This is... One of the steepest roads I've ever walked up. If I point the camera horizontally in front of me, it still doesn't really do it justice of how steep this is. And that road falls away there. The next section of road was even steeper, but this was exactly the exercise I needed. And I persevered and got right up to the top for splendid views back down over this South Bay. Pausing to take photos of stunning scenery is a great excuse to stop and get your breath back. I do aim to do a lot more walking on this trip. I've downloaded the All Trails app and I need to find as many walks as possible to try and get my fitness. Ooh, I am worn out. Out in that direction are the Americas. Oh, I'm on the island of Cape Clear, the most southerly inhabited part of Ireland. And it's a Gaeltoc region, meaning they speak Irish. There's a population of 120. And in true Irish tradition, there are three pubs and a distillery. And from the crates of beers I saw on the dock, they obviously export them to the mainland. How stunning is that? Right over in the distance, in the middle of the screen, you can see Mizzen Head. The bay down in front of us on Cape Clear Island. I'm going to try and say stunning more than Stephen at Country Van Life TV does. Fair plays in Scotland. <sighs> Only bad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. I could murder a pint. So I'm gonna take the quickest route I can find back to one of those three pubs. Now that route took me down there, all the way up that ridge line, across the ridge line, just the other side of it. And then I came down, center of screen now, zigzag down, and then found the road. 
and I'm taking the direct road back. I'll eat a pint. You gotta love this. I recently had the window on the back of my car go. At least I replaced it properly. Unfortunately, the cooler's broken. There was nothing on draft, but this'll do. The foreman who built this lighthouse, James Cavanaugh, laid every course personally and spent seven years on the project building this lighthouse. He felt sick just after finishing, and two weeks later, he died. He would never ever see the light turned on. The 1979 Fastnet race that starts from the Cows and Isle of Wight round the Isle of Scilly to Fastnet led to the loss of 15 lives and hundreds of yachts overturned. On the return leg, younger passengers were allowed to sit in the skipper's chair and steer. How young do you have to be? There are so many islands you can visit around the coast of Ireland, but I thoroughly recommend the Cape Clear ferry trip to Cape Clear Island. After three nights parked up in School Harbour, it was time to move on. First stop was down at Alta. I've been here before last year, but it was worth having a quick look again. I've heard some people joke about they're not interested in looking at old bricks, but some of these things are remarkable that they're still standing. These ferns weren't here last year, well they weren't as thick and as tall as they are now, creating uh, a thick bush on either side of the pathway down to the view over the rocks. I stopped here just because I had a car right behind me and as I pulled up to a stop in this little lay-by, I saw the most amazing little bay. I just keep seeing day after day after day these little sandy beach bays. This one's got a few people swimming on it and that's about it. Absolutely wonderful. Half a mile later and yet another tiny lovely little cove. A little tent down there, I'm not sure if they're camping or just setting up like with one of those beach windbreaks but great little place to camp it does say no camping on signs are nearby but who's gonna tell you off and if you think this bit's great wait till i pan round this is absolutely amazing this barley cove bay and this is low tide but this gets absolutely packed in the afternoons and at weekends there's a car park here Room for a lot of cars. It's even got a toilet block. Well, that's pretty cool, a floating bridge. Now I'm over the water, it's very weird to walk on. Yeah. 
and the bridge just pulls up a little bit short. Pretty cool indeed. What a stunning place this is. Next stop was Mizzen Head. Had a can chips and a cup of coffee. Lovely. And from Mizzen Head, I used the 15 tone zoom on my iPhone to get a picture of the fast net rock where I was yesterday. Now there is a clue there. That it's not chicken. Look at the size portion of this. Raspberry cheesecake. Don't mind if I do. Just had a quick rain shower. Some cows appeared in the corner of this field. This black one's particularly noisy. But as I got the camera out, I just decided to shut up. Must be feeding time. I hope I don't come back all night as I'm planning to sleep here. I'm at the very top of the Mizzenhead car park, the very furthest part from the visitors' centre and cafe. Tucked away in a corner. It's about the levelest ground I could find. That's the access road in. And this is the car park for Mizzenhead. is down there at the very bottom. I stupidly left my doors open for too long tonight and got quite a few little flies, mozzies, whatever they are in the car. I've just had a little spray and there's some old deet I found. Um, perhaps not good for me neither though. Anyway, time to watch some it's half 10 at night and it's time to watch some videos and i've been watching um my friend mark and emma who go by the channel name was hunter and crew i think it is just watching them that now i'm gonna use the tossing technique and there's something this is just rice it's fine but if there's liquids in there or fat um i know from experience if you toss it, it's not sealed and it will go flying. So if you're going to toss well, there you go. As Mark says, he's an experienced tosser. So, first video, I think, of the year. Or in a long, long time. Hunter and crew, van life. Got a beautiful van, just done the NC500. And, um, check it out. Over the next few videos, I will show you my setup for this car camper. There'll be some reviews on some of the stuff I'm using and plenty more videos of my travels. So thank you very much for getting this far in this video. Appreciate it. See you next week.